If I ever have seen magic, it's been in Africa, author John Hemingway once said. You'll discover vast stretches of gorgeous coastlines, scorching deserts, epic waterfalls, soaring mountains, and ancient history, as well as welcoming people in rich cultural traditions that vary from one country to another. Africa really is unlike any other continent, but what you didn't know and what we're about to show you is that there's so much more to this dynamic place. 15 Shocking Things Recently Discovered in Africa Africa is splitting apart. East Africa is home to several geographical wonders that have attracted tourists to the area. It also includes active volcanoes such as the Old Donyo Lingai in Tanzania and the Dalafila in Erda El in Ethiopia. But there's a new natural wonder that really has scientists and locals buzzing. The Dabahu Fissure. This large crack stretching over a mile is fairly new. It made a sudden appearance recently in southwestern Kenya and continues to grow. It even caused part of a highway to collapse. But questions remain as to why it's formed in the location that it did and whether its appearance is at all connected to the ongoing East African rift. The Earth is an ever-changing planet, even though in some respects change might be also unnoticeable to us. Plate tectonics are a good example of this, but every now and again something dramatic happens and leads to a renewed question about the African continent splitting in two. Initially, the appearance of the crack was linked to tectonic activity along the East African rift but geologists now think that this feature is most likely an erosional gully, the erosion of soft soils and filling an old rift-related fault. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What a man discovered in Africa shocked the whole world, and we can see why. Laid out on a stark plain of concrete is a creature we didn't know actually existed. A merman. Throughout the history of human mythology, mermaids received much attention but their male counterparts not so much. While mermaids represented beauty, romance, and sometimes terror, mermen remained left behind in folklore. In their appearance, mermen do not differ much from mermaids. They're mythical creatures who have a form of an upper human torso and a lower half of a fishtail. Originally celebrated as deities, mermen slowly slipped back into the legends as the ordinary mythological creatures of the sea, who very rarely show up on the surface. Is this an actual merman specimen bringing life to something we thought to never have existed? The tail is practically serpentine. And what's with the blowhole near where the tail meets the human torso? There's a lot to unpack in this image. Perhaps it's just an elaborate, well-done public art piece by a talented African artist that just looks incredibly detailed and lifelike. What say you? Comment below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Floating Village Makoko is sometimes referred to as the Venice of Africa, owing to its waterways. It's an informal settlement across the third mainland bridge located on the coast of mainland Lagos in Nigeria. A third of the community is built on stilts along the lagoon and the rest is on land. The waterfront part of the community is largely harbored by the Egon people. The name Makoko is literally translated from Yoruba to the Pick a Coco. In Yoruba tradition, a cocoa leaves are used to aid fertility and also used during unique traditions. Needless to say, transport here is mostly done by canoe. This started as a fishing settlement with family groups migrating here from the Benin Republic in the 19th century. An old map from 1962 shows the Makoko community in an almost empty Lagos when the population counted less than one million people. Since 1962, the population has grown dramatically but the statistics about the settlement and its communities are hazy, with little information about structures, density, or streets. This means it's almost impossible to properly track land ownership, plan infrastructure, optimize services, plan for emergencies, or support development. In short, living here is challenging, but the community does its best to live a life afloat. Trouble Tower even though this building in South Africa is currently under new ownership and undergoing a renovation upgrade, its dystopian appearance has seen the skyscraper used as a filming location for the sci-fi movies District 9 and Resident Evil The Final Chapter. Ponte City, in the heart of Johannesburg, is easily the city's most notorious building. The hollow, cylindrical structure was first opened in 1975, 
as luxury apartments and remains the tallest residential building in Africa. By the 1990s, however, the tower had become the poster child of urban decay as the apartments were overrun with crime. Life in the building became truly brutal after the fall of apartheid. As crime rose in the once upscale neighborhood, numerous gangs moved into the building. The troubled tower became a center of organized crime activity, and life in the building became extremely unsafe. At one point, the garbage piled five stories high in the open inner courtyard of the building, so owners all but abandoned the structure to decay. At one point, there were even proposals to turn it into a high-rise prison. It's that bad. Today, it's the focus of an urban regeneration plan once shunned by many of the city's inhabitants and tourists alike, the tower is trying to turn its image around. <laughs> Ethiopia Underground Church In the heart of Ethiopia's highlands, 11 rock-cut churches stand as a testament to the country's rich heritage and architectural mastery. The monolithic construction is a must-see for visitors to Ethiopia. 800 years ago, an Ethiopian king ordered a new capital for followers of Christianity. At 8,000 feet on the central plateau of Ethiopia, there it is. Each is carved from a single, gigantic block of stone. No bricks, no mortar, concrete, or lumber were used. It's just rock sculpted into magnificent architecture. Yet, not much is known about who built them or why. But the faithful of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church believes it was angels. Out of the 11 churches, four are freestanding, and seven share a wall with the mountain out of which they are carved. The churches in each grouping are connected by a system of tunnels and trenches. Generally, trenches were excavated in a rectangle, isolating a solid granite block. The block was then carved both externally and internally, the work proceeding from the top downward. The expert craftsmanship of the Lalabella churches are unique, and restoration work in the 20th century indicated that some of the churches may have been used originally as fortifications and royal residences. <laughs> Dead Forest The Namit Noklif Park is a national park in western Namibia that encompasses part of the Namib Desert, the Noklif Mountain Range, and the lagoon at Sandwich Harbor. With an overall area of just over 19,000 square miles, the park was at the time of its last expansion the largest game park in Africa and the fourth largest in the world. It also consists of a strip of land on the Atlantic Ocean, including 1,000 miles of sea. The Namib Desert is at the heart of the national park. As the oldest desert in the world, it displays brilliantly colored sand dunes that are considered some of the largest in the world. The landscapes include remarkable mountains, naturally carved canyons, and tremendous gravel plains too. One of the best ways to truly appreciate the majestic nature here is from above. Taking a scenic flight or balloon ride over the dunes is captivating as it allows you to truly capture the astounding size of the dunes and the endless sea of rolling desert. The park administration has developed asphalt roads that make it easy to see many of the surrounding landscapes. As the desert moves closer to the shoreline, the terrain is characterized by lagoons, mudflats, and wetlands. This terrain and vegetation attract hundreds of thousands of birds, creating a bird watcher's haven. <laughs> Chinese Ghost Towns A Chinese corporation has built a town in Angola known as the Kalamba Social Housing Project the $3.5 billion development covers over 12,000 acres and was built to house about 500,000 people. And it's one of several satellite cities being constructed by Chinese firms around Angola. Just outside Angola's capital city of Luanda, it encompasses a residential development of 750 eight-story apartment buildings, a dozen schools, and more than 100 retail units. It was designed to be a self-contained development consisting of affordable housing for half a million Angolans. However, it's actually fairly empty. The new city's inauguration in 2011 attracted a great deal of international attention. However, a year later, journalists reported that Colombo was a ghost town. Numerous factors explain the number of uninhabited apartments, but most important was the fact most people in the region couldn't afford to buy property there. The apartments in the complex cost somewhere between $120,000 and $200,000, none of which helps the average Angolan who, on average, only makes about $5,100 per year. Today, the local government ordered a price reduction and this ghost town is slowly filling up. Soweto Bungee Tower 
In this famous Johannesburg township in South Africa, this bungee in Soweto adds a whole new dimension to the bungee experience. Based around the Orlando Towers, part of an old power station, outdoor adventure activities are fast changing the way visitors experience this already vibrant place. For starters, you now have the most awesome view of Soweto from the top of the towers. With a 325-foot drop to the ground, the adventure experience includes the bungee jump, a tower swing, the world's first between two cooling towers, an internal tower swing, and base jumping, all off the top of the West Tower. Initially, Orlando Towers and Soweto were a site of the Coal Orlando Power Station. The power station was designed in 1935 to help offset the burden of power needs from the main city station in Johannesburg, but construction was delayed by the Second World War. Construction was finally completed in 1955, and the power station served the booming city for a long time. Now, the Soweto bungee jump sees you falling 33 stories down. The power swing offers a 120-foot freefall before the swing cables kick in. The ominously named Abyss, another world first, sees you jumping inside the tower. There's also a viewing platform for the slightly less adventurous. Desert meets the ocean The high sand dunes and the point where the desert meets the sea are the key attractions of this important heritage site. Located along Africa's Atlantic coast towards the southwest, the coastal desert of Namibia is a rare geological place like no other. Firstly, did you know that the Namib Desert is one of the driest destinations on the planet? On top of being the oldest desert in the world, its Mars-like landscape features nothing except high sand dunes, barren mountains, and gravel plains extending across three nations. Due to the wind approaching from all directions, the sand dunes are formed in star-like shape and consequently, they're quite immovable. The climate along the coast is shaped by a unique current, a nutrient-rich ocean current. These cold Atlantic waters produce cool sea breezes that keep shore temperatures mild, despite the intense sunlight and arid desert climate. The current also attracts plankton and large schools of fish and whales, resulting in an environment teeming with sea life. But most of the beach is unpopulated and inaccessible. Travelers visit this area by driving in four-wheel drive vehicles or flight seeing in light aircraft to see the immensity of the coastline. <laughs> Fairy Circles Fairy circles are circular patches of land barren of plants, varying in size often encircled by a ring of stimulated growth of grass. Until recently, the phenomenon was only known to occur here in the arid grasslands and western parts of southern Africa. In the Namib Desert, the sprawling grasslands are splotched with a set of spots. Fields of fairy circles ranging from 10 to 65 feet in diameter stretch for hundreds of miles. They look otherworldly from satellite imagery on Google Maps, but local legend says they were created by gods who left behind their footprints on the red earth. But the formation of the fairy circles has more to do with math and biology than folklore. What may look like a random arrangement may not be random at all. One favorite theory is that the distinct vegetation patterns are a population-level consequence of competition for scarce water, as the plants organize themselves to maximize access to scarce resources. The circular barren patches capture water which then flows to the outer edges of the ring. More water available increases biomass and roots, which leads to the soil becoming looser. The less dense soil allows more water to penetrate and feed the vegetation creating a feedback loop supporting the plants at the edge of the circle. <laughs> Color of Boa Cop The brilliant Boa Cop, literally meaning above the Cape in Afrikaans, is an area of Cape Town, South Africa. Situated on the slopes of Signal Hill above the city, it's the historical center of Cape Town culture. The area contains the largest concentration of pre-1850 architecture in South Africa, and is the oldest surviving residential neighborhood in Cape Town. And no surprise, it's known for its brightly colored homes and cobblestone streets. The story behind these colorful houses in Cape Town is as bright and refreshing as the houses are. Boakot was formerly known as the Malay Quarter as it was inhabited by Cape Malays, slaves who were brought from Malaysia, Indonesia, and the rest of the African continent got to work in the city. Back in the 1760s, these rental houses were built and leased to slaves. The rule was that all houses had to be all white. 
But when this rule was lifted and the slaves became able to purchase their houses, they decided to paint them in the brightest colors as a metaphor for freedom. As for why so many different colors? In keeping with their reputation for being a community with strong ties and friendships forged through decades of hardship, residents get together to discuss who's painting which house what color, thus avoiding color clashes. The Skeleton Coast The name Skeleton Coast, derived most probably from the huge numbers of stranded whales that lost their life here and whose skeletons could be seen all over the place. But that's not all. The barren wasteland is also a boneyard of shipwrecks for miles. Along this coastal stretch in Namibia, it's a very hostile but fascinating area. Numerous ships have been stranded at the Skeleton Coast thanks to the thick fog, the rough sea, unpredictable currents, and stormy winds. The sailors who were able to make it to the land did not stand a chance of survival. Despite the hostile nature, there are quite a number of wild animals to observe. For example, there are desert-adapted elephants, rhinos, desert lions, brown hyenas, jackals, giraffes, seals, and zebras. The animals get most of their water from wells dug by the baboons or elephants, and due to the abundance of fish, this coastal stretch is a paradise for anglers. Not only do the anglers enjoy the fish, but it's also the staple diet for the Cape Fur Seal, occurring in great numbers along the eastern coast where they form huge colonies. Most of the plant and insect species of the sand dune systems depend on the thick sea fogs which engulf the coast for their moisture. But despite the Skeleton Coast's harshness, life finds a way. <coughs> lake Natron Located in Tanzania, this lake is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. Colored a deep red from salt-loving organisms and algae, this lake reaches extremely hot temperatures and is nearly as toxic as ammonia. Yet, amazingly, millions of flamingos make Lake Natron their home. Essentially, this watery hell is a salt lake, meaning that water flows in but doesn't flow out. Over time, as water evaporates, it leaves behind high concentrations of salt and other minerals. But unlike those other lakes, Lake Natron is extremely alkaline. The water's alkalinity comes from the sodium carbonate and other minerals that flow into the lake from the surrounding hills and deposits of sodium carbonate, which was once used in Egyptian mummification, also act as a fantastic type of preservative for those animals unlucky enough to die here. Not long ago, a helicopter pilot tragically crashed and the aircraft was rapidly corroded by the lake's waters. As you might expect, few creatures live in the harsh waters, which can reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit. They're home to just a single fish species, yet it's considered one of their only breeding grounds for flamingos, so the preservation of this lake is of the utmost importance. <coughs> Donakil Acid Pools In a surreal landscape of colors, dominated by luminescent ponds of yellows and greens, boiling hot water bubbles up like a cauldron, while poisonous chlorine and sulfur gases choke the air. This place is Ethiopia, known as Dalal, is a unique terrestrial hydrothermal system around a cinder cone volcano in the Donakil Depression. It's known for its unearthly colors and mineral patterns and the very acidic fluids that discharge from its hydrothermal springs. Over time, the volcanic eruptions nearby released lava that sealed off an inland sea that evaporated in the arid climate. The tectonic plate activity in the Earth's crust is responsible for the depression's colorful lakes, steaming hot springs, geysers, and rocky terrain. The vivid colors are due to the sea and rainwater from the neighboring coast that get absorbed into the sulfuric lakes and heat up due to the volcano's magma. It's covered with more than 10 tons of salt. When the salt from the sea reacts with the minerals in the volcanic magma, it gives birth to these beautiful colors, and colorful crust-like deposits develop across the land. It's one of the world's hottest places too, as well as one of its lowest, at 400 feet below sea level. Majingo Island Though it's only half the size of a soccer field, Africa's Majingo Island on the border of Kenya and Uganda is home to some 500 people, making it one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Located on Lake Victoria, it's a fishing hub teeming with Nile perch, a profitable export with lots of money to be made and little space to fit all of the fishermen seeking their share. The tiny half-acre rock is covered with overlapping houses. 
As it stands, Majingo Island is a phenomenon to behold, with bars, brothels, a casino, and a labyrinth of makeshift homes. It was barely inhabited until the 2000s. When fishermen started settling there, it was covered with weeds and many birds and snakes lived there. Subsequently, other fishermen came to the island because of its proximity to fishing grounds rich with fresh catches. In 2004, Uganda took control of the island, and in 2009, it forced Kenyan inhabitants to obtain special permits to operate their businesses. Then, the two nations got on the brink of what was considered to be the world's smallest war. In the meantime, the island is co-managed by both countries, but tensions occasionally flare up. However, fishing communities on Lake Victoria have seen massive reductions in their catches in recent years. <coughs> Robocops Kinshasa, the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, is betting that these giant robots could be more effective and promote safety in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's hope so. There are over 2,200 deaths from car accidents every year. Faced with rising car ownership and a lack of trust in police, city authorities have recruited solar-powered Robocops to control the capital's chaotic streets. The eight-foot-tall humanoid traffic robot equipped with a rotating chest and video cameras, now controls and monitors traffic. Some critics have called the robots an eye-catching and expensive distraction. They cost over 20 grand each, while others celebrate their effectiveness. They essentially work like normal security cameras. As cars go by, the bots record them, and police can monitor the real-time footage. Those who speed or run a red light get tickets. The robots are made by a company called Women's Tech. The idea for the robots first came to the engineer and a few of her peers and motivated by the ease from which people could speed, run red lights, and flee or bribe their way out of consequences. Robots, she thought, could make sure that people were accountable to the rule of law and could help the state recoup some revenue, potentially funding further infrastructure developments. Shocked yet? We are too. Thanks for checking out this video. Like and subscribe and hang around. There are more discoveries around the corner.